This issue is divisive, stirring up passion on both sides. Let's talk about it with two people joining me here in Washington in our broadcast center. Matthew Bronsky he is a Middle East expert and senior analyst at the analyst uh, firm Wikistrat. And Phyllis Bennis directs the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies. Uh, some calling this significant, other ones, other folks calling this contentious. Um, but we did hear one man in that, in that piece say that this is a mechanism for justice. I wanted to start with you. What are your thoughts about that? Well, it's a mechanism for the Palestinian version of justice and legitimacy, and it's, do, it's pursuing that, unfortunately, at the expense of statehood. So going to the uh, International Criminal Court is essentially a way to circumvent negotiations. They do not want to negotiate with Israel. There's been uh, offers made in 2000 and 2008 and 2014, and they've either turned it down or made no response. So they've determined for themselves that the cost of saying yes is too much for them to pay. So this is another way to gain statehood, they're hoping, but unfortunately, it's not going to work out for them in the end. They're going to need to get back to the negotiating table and negotiate an end to the conflict. And by keeping it this way, for, that, for international pressure to just be brought onto Israel and the Palestinian Authority to be coddled by the community, it's, well, it's let, never going to lead to statehood. Let's let uh, Phyllis jump in here. You think it is a mechanism for justice or not? I think it's an attempt for justice. This is about rights. This isn't about statehood. This isn't about a way to become a state. This is a way to talk about international law. This is a way of holding Israel accountable for potential war crimes. It may be that Palestinians will also be held accountable for violations of international law as well. And they've said, that's fine. We want justice that is based on international law, the Geneva Conventions, et cetera. And in that context, the International Criminal Court is exactly the right place. What we've seen is that the possibility of justice in the context of a state or whatever context is not possible within what we've had of 24 years of failed diplomacy controlled by the United States. So instead, it, this is an effort to internationalize the issue as it should have been for many, many years and to look from the vantage point of rights rather than starting from the vantage point of a particular solution that somebody thinks is going to work and somebody else doesn't. Some human rights groups, though, have said that the, the Israeli courts have really not held the military accountable, and that's one of the reasons why they this have. has happened. They have or they haven't? They have. They have an independent judiciary. They've launched an investigation. And what's the result of those? They've been started. They're ongoing. How no, quickly they do they have. happen in the United States not or in any very. other democracy But Israel has been going country. through this for years. These are not the first war crimes allegations right. that we've had. But if you look at the and International at Criminal the, Court, it's not set up to prosecute countries that have independent functioning it, judiciaries it before, they're, before they've actually it gone through the legal process, number one. Number that two, this is simply turning the process. ICC into yet another highly politicized UN there's nothing politicized about it. This is about justice. What happens in Syria? This well, is, it's not. This no, is about justice, and to it, the it extent take it's up about Syria justice, as well. the question still is: Does this advance statehood? I don't and think the that's the only is, question. This advances the fact rights. Is, this advances the possibility of rights. Statehood is not on the agenda. Your prime minister just said it already, but it wasn't that's not on what the, the agenda prime minister before. Said. And sure, any but obvious it, reading of the region shows. That a Palestinian is state agenda. is going to rights. be very unlikely, rights specifically are what we're fighting because for here. This is about line. rights, not about creating a state. Well, let me let me go where uh, Matthews brought up a point that that has been percolating. Uh, there are some European countries that are afraid that uh, this may tarnish the court in a sense, politicize it, as he pointed out. Do you I think, think that's a legitimate concern? I think that concerns about the court are very real. I think it's a serious problem. I was in the negotiations in Rome. I was in Rome for two weeks during those negotiations in 1998 that created the court. And there was a great deal of unease about the role of the United States, the most powerful country, the biggest democracy. It always likes to talk about that, the, the longest democracy, et cetera, also was, refusing, was refusing to sign, along with Israel, along with China, along with several other countries, Iran, Kuwait. These were the bedfellows that the US was, was with. The U.S., Israel, I forget, it was seven countries were the only ones who voted no. And that was a huge problem. But the problem is not that it's being politicized now because it finally may, we don't even know, it may take up the question of war crimes committed in the Palestinian territories. But it was politicized from the beginning. It is a political institution. That's a big problem in all of these international institutes. But it's beginning, and it's taking responsibility for this. And the fact that it exists means it has to be built on. Will it be ultimately a, 
uh, a serious court if no one from the U.S. can be held accountable? I think that's of a big question. Of course, the U.S. is never going to join it. And of course, Israel is not going and to join it. And that makes it a huge and problem. And when you have 210,000 dead Syrians just next door, and this is what the international community is, is concerned about, not a peep this isn't, on, on that. There have been it's, plenty it's of peeps to, on this. To say that it's a politicized institution, I mean, that, that's only at the, at the very surface well, level. Well, let's go back it's to the, the point that you brought up. What does this do to the peace process? And I'll start with you, Phyllis. I think the peace process has been dead for several years. The peace process is over. The 600,000 Israeli settlers that are living in the occupied West Bank and Arab East Jerusalem are, if nothing else, a huge impediment to that. There's not going to be the kind of two-state solution with swaps, always said very quickly, as if it's all one word. The other claim that's made is everyone knows, this is the word we hear all the time, everyone knows that the three major settlement blocks that amount to about 80% of those illegal settlers are going to be part of Israel. Well, the Palestinians who used to own that land, who lived on that land, who farmed that land, they don't know that. That's not something they've agreed to. Their negotiators probably are willing to negotiate that away. That doesn't mean it's going to be a viable situation. What we need is an entirely different kind of peace process, one that is based in the United Nations and not in Washington. This isn't about that. This is about justice. This is about accountability. This is about ending Israeli impunity. This is an important move for that reason. Uh, I want to get your thoughts because she brings up the United Nations. I suspect that's not an avenue that you Well, the United Nations to... passed Resolution 242 in 1967 that said that Israel should withdraw from territories, not all of the territories, in exchange for peace. So that is what the basis of negotiations is supposed to be. And if the Palestinians were to come to the table and have a negotiation that is actually based on creating two states for two people and of course, Israel being a Jewish state, if they recognize that, then there's a pathway forward. We have a serious problem with the 20% of Israelis who are not Jewish. It's really not a serious problem oh, at all. Oh, I think all. it is for those people. When you define it as a Jewish state, that's a big problem for the people who are not Jewish. I think we've got a big problem in coming up with a solution between the two of you and, and the amount of time that we have. When red lines don't meet, you're not going to have a negotiation that's Well, it. we've run out of time. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you both for coming in. Thank uh, you. Really appreciate it.